Morning, I hope you're doing really, really well. Hope you had a great Christmas and a happy new year. I hope you're looking forward to what's in store in 2024. I am. It's nice that I'm finally over my annual Christmas illness. I seem to get sick every Christmas. I was sick for two weeks this year, two weeks last year. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's when I finally slow down and stop traveling. It just goes and gets me. The weather has been pretty terrible outside, so I haven't missed a great deal, but it is time for me to get back out there. And to that end, I thought it'd be useful to share with you the gear that I have most enjoyed using, most relied upon over the last year. The stuff that I used to race in Patagonia when I was in that terrible weather in Chile at Across Andes. And just stuff I use here at home in the UK to get me through those really wet cold um not horrible because i kind of like them but you know the rides well typical english winter rides basically so some of these products i have been sent by the brand some of them i have been given as a present by my partner some of them i gave to my partner and i use all the time and other ones i've bought so it's a whole mixed bag probably worth noting before i begin uh that i do ride different disciplines so this is not like gravel or road or mountain bike specific it's just cycling specific so let's start with the first thing so numero uno i was planning on doing a standalone review of these amazing pants they are what i wore to race in chile i wore them all day every day with padded, padded cycling shorts underneath and in the past when i've layered up waterproof trousers over the top of cycling shorts i've been quite uncomfortable not with these they are seven mesh thunder pants uh they are waterproof gore-tex pants they are not road gravel or mountain bike specific they're just cycling pants and they're the best most waterproof pants i have ever, ever had and as i said they're comfortable so they're full-on gore-tex and they've got lots of really nice features that I like. So you see here, they've got a zip that goes all the way up to the knee pretty much. As far as I'm aware, this is what I use it for. That is for when you're riding mountain bikes and you want to take your pads on and off without taking your trousers on and off. So that is a really nice little feature. You've also got this really nice soft cuff at the bottom with Velcro. So you can make sure that the pants are tight around your ankle so you're not going to get them caught in your chain. You are actually meant to cut these down to the correct length for yourself. I haven't bothered, they don't seem that far off. There's this extra little bit of stretchy whatever it is. You've got that around the waist which helps keep things comfortable and then you've got these um, little buckles so that you can tighten things up and make sure it's a secure fit. They're quite minimal in terms of other features. You've just got a small pocket here, but the main draw about these is that they're comfortable and they're waterproof. They're Gore-Tex, you've got fully taped seams inside. The material feels and really has proven itself to be very durable, um, but I, I really, really rate these. The only thing I've got to say that's slightly negative about them is I suppose they're very, very expensive. They retail at $350 in the States. I'm not exactly sure what they're on offer for currently in the UK, but I guess you could see it as an investment. I mean, a mega investment. That's a lot of money, isn't it? But yay for Thunderpants! Numero dos. These five tens trail cross shoes. So I use these for mountain biking when I'm riding with flat pedals because they've got these super grippy soles and they really are grippy. Um, if you get your foot in the wrong place, you have to kind of pick it up and move it across to the right place. They're really, really good. And I've actually stopped riding mountain bike clipped in since I got these. So these are not the Gore-Tex version. I really regret not buying the Gore-Tex version, but they're still amazing. I just wear them with a pair of waterproof socks. So they've got this neoprene little cuff around here. So they come up a little bit higher than normal shoes. And that does help keep the water out and keep it snug around your sock. They're very, very comfortable. Super duper comfortable, very, very warm not waterproof because I didn't buy the Gore-Tex ones, but they are, I just really, really like them, really rate them. That is my go-to mountain bike shoe for wet weather. Next up, my solution for those long, cold, wet winter road rides. I really suffer with cold feet. So when I say these are good, I really, really mean it. These are Lakes CX 146 road cycling shoes. So as you can see, they've got uh, three bolt cleats on the bottom. They've got a boa thing, a boa, adjuster 
<laughs> here so you can crank them up and there's also a little tab here so that you can make sure that you get enough enough tension on the lower part rather than just yanking them really tight around your ankles so um these have got a kind of thin silhouette upper and they are not 100% waterproof but they do a pretty damn good job of keeping most of the rain out on a, a, a day with a few little showers you've got this extra flap here that makes all the difference that uh, really stops all the road splash from your front wheel making your feet wet and they haven't got any little holes underneath you do get holes in a lot of road shoes down the bottom they put them there for ventilation but it's not really what you want in winter they're very very comfortable the only downside is, well, obviously the price, there's always that, but I really don't like the way they look. I, I think they look awful, but I don't care so much because they make my feet stay nice and warm. So thank you, Lake. These were gifted by the brand. Next up on my list of essentials, it's this. It's a shoe dryer. This thing is worth its weight in gold and it was not expensive. I bought this for my partner last year for his birthday or Christmas present, I forget which, and we use it the entire time. So it's from Amazon, it's called Renergy. I think it was about 20 or 30 quid and you just plug it in and then switch it on and it blows hot air into your shoes, which you've put on here. I will show you. You can change the amount of time that you put it on to dry your shoes. I tend to put it on for the maximum amount. Just make sure that you don't put actually totally dripping shoes on here. Wet is fine, but you don't want water pouring into the insides because I imagine it will make it short out. But we've had this for a year and no problem so far. It's really, really good. The next thing that I've loved this year is the jacket that I wore to race across Andes. Uh, this is a trail jacket by Velocio. They sent this to me with a bunch of other stuff to test out and I love it. The most important thing to note is that it's waterproof and it does a really, really good job of keeping you dry. It's got a hood with a little um, hardened peak bit at the front so you can pull this hood right over your bike helmet and then this little bit at the front stops all the rain from falling in your eyes i am not crazy about riding in the rain with a little road cycling jacket that just goes around your neck why wouldn't you want a hood um it has got zip pockets on each side oh i can see that i washed it with a tissue in there and if you have your pockets open there's um ventilation in there so that's that's how you get a bit of ventilation in the jacket although I have to say I find it's quite breathable anyway round the back you've got another extra pocket so you can stash some things in there you've got little um, pulls around the neck so you can cinch it in around the hood area and make sure that you're keeping out as much rain as possible and down the bottom you've got another elasticated cord so again you can adjust the fit it's very lightweight and packable, which is why I took it on across Andes. It's also very comfortable to wear. You've also got a two-way zip, so that's super nice. This is a women's specific jacket, but they do have a men's version also. My next recommendation for you is this simple looking bit of kit. It is Ass Savers Win Wing. And this one is designed for gravel bikes because it's a little bit wider. So Ass Savers for ages made those kind of mud guards or fenders where you just stick them in the saddle like this and they would give you a little bit of prote protection but they weren't amazing the updated version uses this kind of um, support or frame that you attach to the seat stays and then you put this uh, flap on there it works remarkably well for something so simple and they're not expensive so i've got them on all my bikes and i recommend them to everyone they're really 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 good if you are riding a road bike where there's not a lot of uh, frame clearance for putting on a normal mud guard the final product that i wanted to tell you about is my portable jet wash that my partner bought me for christmas last year i absolutely love it because i really hate cleaning bikes and if you leave them to dry with all the mud on it just makes it so much worse also if you put them in your van it's nice to clean them first so i always take this everywhere with me blimey i've just looked it up because i wanted to tell you about it and i've seen how much he paid for it so it's the works hydro shot portable cordless jet wash and you can actually put the hose into any body of water to draw from in order to wash your bike so there's a kind of collapsible bucket that it comes with and I take that with me I just scoop up water from a stream or whatever and use that if I've run out of my own supply 
Normally, I would have a big kind of gallon jug of water that I use when I go camping. In the winter months, I use that to fill up my jet wash and I have it stored in the back of my van with the jet wash fully charged and ready to go. I'm gonna go outside and show you because obviously this is completely useless sitting here telling you all about it and not showing you what it looks like. So I suppose I'm gonna to have to go and wash a bike. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna clean my bike. I just went outside and the weather is awful. So I've brought the jet wash in to show you. This is the little expandable collapsible bucket thing that comes with the kit. And here is the jet wash itself. So you have this, which is obviously the handle trigger kind of thing. And you have this battery at the bottom, which you can take off and put in a charger uh, on your wall. And then you just take the batteries with you. I guess you could get multiples. That would be pretty cool. And then you've got different attachments. This brush thing I never use. I just put this um, squirter on the jet wash. It's got an adjustable end on it so you can adjust the spray that's coming out of it. You've also got this um, little reservoir thing that you can put washing fluid in so then you can spray foam all over your bike. But for some reason I haven't ever managed to get that to work. All I usually do is attach this hose, stick the end of it in my camping water container or the uh, collapsible bucket and then I just clean all the dirt off my bike using that and then I go over it with a normal um, brush and some cleaning fluid and then I finish off with another squirt. It's pretty powerful. It does a good job of blasting off the dirt if you get it whilst it's still wet. So that's it from me. These are my top products for wet weather cycling. Look how cold it is. My hands have gone numb. Uh, so I'll leave it at that and go and warm up. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time. Bye.